likely only two reasons you clicked on a carrot soup video. You and I have already met and you know I'm about to show you unexpectedly delicious ways to serve the soup and meals your family will love. Or we're meeting by chance because you're curious or confused about how to preserve this vegetable. Well honey, you are in the right place and I don't waste time. I've got a five ingredient carrot soup recipe that is spectacular. Oh yeah, I mean spectacular and I am not backing away from that. But first, sit tight because I'm going to show you some recipes that you're going to want to make with your creamy carrot soup. And yeah, they're going to be perfect for anyone's diet or taste buds. And then I'm going to take you step by step through the easy prep and pressure canning. Enough talking, let's get to our first dish. Southwest carrot and black bean soup is a delicious way to add a fusion of flavor to this recipe. Layer your soup with sauteed onions, black beans, and sprinkle with chipotle seasoning and cilantro for that authentic Southwest taste. <laughs> Quinoa and carrot soup allows you to add even more nutritional goodness to an already healthy dish. Start by slicing fresh avocado and browning pumpkin seeds in a pan. Heap a base of carrot soup with quinoa, cilantro, and your toppings. The velvety texture of the soup with the crunchy goodness of nuts and creamy avocado is pure bliss. Plus, this bowl is gorgeous. Heat leftover wild rice topped with fresh thyme and toasted hazelnuts or pecans to create a quick and easy carrot soup dish that is both beautiful and perfect for company and crowds. Skirt steak, braised cabbage, and carrot soup is delicious and healthy while still giving you a good dose of protein and veggies. This dish has an explosion of flavors and textures from the purple cabbage, seasonings like cumin and turmeric onion mix along with tender pan-seared steaks. Carrot soup never looks so good. Don't toss out the feathery green tops from your carrots either because we'll turn those ends into a pesto for a crunchy carrot pasta soup topping. Fried panko breadcrumbs gives this dish the perfect crunch and the noodles soak up all the creamy carrot broth. The fresh taste of the pesto gives you gourmet goodness right at home. still may not be fully convinced that this will win over even your pickiest of eaters. And darling, I'm not even talking about the kiddos, because in my house, it's the fully grown. More specifically, my dad. A southern, stubborn, 60-something who just knew he wasn't going to like this recipe until he tried it. So after we went on like a four and a half mile hike the other day, it's still early spring and it was really cool. I was really looking forward to coming back and getting some carrot and fennel soup. And this guy... You were giving me all mm. kinds of like, I don't want to eat carrot soup. Isn't that going to be baby food? Mm. And I just had to be like, you know what? Just taste it. Just be quiet, Cass. He just needs to taste it. Well, I guess I got to confess. I really didn't think that I would like carrot soup because I did not like it when I was feeding it to her as a baby. She wouldn't eat it. And I would go and try it to trick her that it was good. And that carrot stuff was nasty. So it was no way. But I do have to admit, however she ended up making it, Simple. that at first I had myself convinced that I wasn't going to like it. Yeah. But pretty soon you keep on eating it and it just wears you down. And you just have to get to that point where it's just like, you know what? This is good. Get you, something this evening before I go home? Um, It's cold outside, yeah, so this yeah, is a perfect have some evening. More. We have some more. Oh my goodness. Dog butt in our face. <laughs> <laughs> for this evening, I'm looking for some carrot soup before I head back to sunny Florida. So there you have it. If carrots are in season or you have some in your fridge or your freezer that you need to use up, honey, what are you waiting for? If this is our first time meeting, hi, I'm Cassandra from the blog, becomingafarmgirl.com. I'm here to help you start canning and preserving your own ingredients right at home and share ways to use your home can pantry and meals your family will love. Now it's time to get to the recipe, but you don't have to worry about writing anything 
description down. The link to the printable recipe is below. I also have a link where you can sign up to get the full recipe, blog post, video, and pictures before I even post here on the channel. So for some, this recipe is already in your inbox. Now this is strictly the recipe where I go a bit more into depth about things. This is not a newsletter. And if you're interested in live upcoming caning workshops with me, that info is below too. Oh, last thing, you're gonna see me in a couple of minutes when I come back to talk about canning, safety, recipe tips, and a few other things. Now let's make some carrot and fennel soup. I always return my silicone scrap collector bin which hooks onto any kitchen cabinet or drawer to make quick work of collecting produce ends and pills to store in the fridge or freezer. This recipe starts with slicing fennel bulbs to remove the ends and fronds, but I encourage you to repurpose them because they'll make a savory stock for other recipes. Peeling your carrots isn't necessary, but I like to add a few skins in my stock. All the carrots need is a rough chop. Transfer your sliced fennel to a heavy bottom pan over medium heat, add olive oil and saute the fennel until it's transparent. Then add your carrots and beef stock and bring things to a boil. Stir to combine, cover and allow things to braise. Braising is when you sear vegetables or meat in a hot pan, then simmer them in flavorful liquid low and slow to develop <laughs> complex flavors. This technique is the secret to this amazing soup. When all of your ingredients are fork tender, remove the soup from the heat. You can either spoon the soup into a food processor to puree, or use a hand immersion blender like I am to avoid added cleanup. Just make sure the soup has had time to cool a bit. <laughs> While we want our carrot soup to be delicious, and it will be, it also needs to be safe. As such, all the recipes that I use and share are from approved canning authorities like the National Center for Home Food Preservation, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, and companies like Ball or Bernardin. The recipe that I'm sharing with you today is one that I adapted from an essential canning recipe cookbook, Ball Blue Book Guide to Preserving Over 500 Recipes, the ultimate guide for creating your own signature foods. So I'm gonna be looking down on some of my recipe notes that are in my canning journal, and this is linked below, and I'll share more about this later. Always Always make sure that you are starting with fresh seasonal carrots. Now these can be ones that are frozen or bought fresh, but the sweet taste of in-season carrots, it can't be beat. And if you're using frozen carrots, just defrost them before you start this recipe. Let's talk about fennel. Because until three years ago, I had no idea this vegetable even existed, let alone look or taste it like. But it is the secret ingredient that is the wow factor that moves people over the hump from all of those erroneous stereotypes about carrot soup. Another soup that's in my top five outside of carrot soup is this potato artichoke al forno soup where fennel is also the main ingredient. Oh, that soup is so delicious. I'll include the link to that video, but fennel really is a star. Now, fennel bulbs are pricier than onions, but this is the recipe to go ahead and diversify the tastes that are in your pantry. Definitely don't substitute onions go with the fennel. And along those same lines, this recipe uses white pepper. White pepper is milder and brighter than black pepper. And you will appreciate its subtle flavor complexity in a way that is a welcome contrast to black pepper. Definitely use a quality vegetable broth in this recipe. Yeah, like I'm talking about your special, special cans of homemade broth. The ones where you had a combination of really good scraps or your favorite store brand. But the pairing of fennel and a really good broth is just essential. It's really what makes this soup so satisfying. Now I love adding spices and herbs, but nope, not in this recipe. This is why I want to keep things super simple. One, because this recipe is delicious enough between the fennel and the homemade broth that it will carry its own weight and taste. And two, because you can add all those seasonings and herbs in later and really push it in a direction that you want later on. But I'm a canner that just loves to leave her options open and it keeps this recipe quick and simple. Be sure to check out the blog for all the recipe tips. Now let's get back to the stove. Next, add water to bring to a simmer. Taste the soup adding salt or pepper if necessary. I like to use an unrefined sea salt that has trace minerals like Redmond sea salt. Increase the heat and bring to a lively simmer for an additional 30 minutes. Get your pressure canner and place a rack at the bottom of the pan. Add two inches of simmering water. Ladle hot soup into warm, clean jars, leaving one inch of headspace. Use a deep bubbler to remove air bubbles. 
Then clean the jar rims by ripening them with warm water or distilled vinegar. Center lids on jars and adjust fan to fingertip tight. Use a jar lifter to put the jars in the canner. Then place the lid on the canner and turn to the locked position. Adjust heat to medium high and vent steam for 10 minutes. Put a weighted gauge on the vent and bring pressure to 10 pounds. Process quart jars for 50 minutes and pint jars for 40 minutes, adjusting for altitude according to your pressure canner's directions. After processing time, remove the jars from the canner but do not tighten loose bands. Don't forget to keep track of your inventory by recording this session in your canning journal. If you'd like to check out my printable and reusable canning journal, that link is below. After allowing your jars to cool for 24 hours, check the lids for a seal. A safely sealed jar lid will not flex up and down when the center is pressed. Label, record this session in your canning journal, and store your jars. Don't forget to click the link to start getting candy recipes with meal ideas and candy workshops straight to your inbox. I'll see you in my kitchen or garden soon. Take care, friends.